in the last class uh, we have read how one microprogrammed uh, CPU can be designed. Already we have read uh, that how the combinational uh, modules, the sequential modules they can be designed and the one CPU and the part of the CPU that arithmetic logic unit, the control unit all these things can be designed. Now with the advancement of technology, the digital systems has uh, it is growing enormously and the complexity of the system is also uh, large. So now the all the design procedure is automated. So today we will discuss that what so far we have read how this can be automated using the CAT tools and what is the current state of the art of designing the digital systems. Now design complexity is increasing rapidly with the increased size and complexity. Now, so far in this class what we discuss the different design procedure, when the system uh, is moderate size, is in moderate size, then we can utilize this all these things or manually we can apply these techniques. But now with the advancement of technology, the digital system grows enormously and so for human being it is not at all possible to do the design manually. So for this the CAT tools are essential, but one thing to be remembered that all these CAT tools they utilize these techniques or actually they implements the design procedure we have read. The design of uh, ALU, the design of the control unit for the CPU design that actually the CAT tools are designed. But as now that another thing is that um, uh, IC for the digital IC that integrated circuit actually the within a silicon the small within a small area millions of gates are fabricated. So, though the design procedure is same, but we need a design flow for this CAT tools. Now the present trend is this standardize the design flow. So first we see what do we mean by this design flow of digital ICs or complex digital circuits. So starting from the design idea down to actual implementation or in the uh, one way we can tell that given a problem um, which we want to design a digital system or given a digital system to be implemented on a silicon the step by step procedure until we get the whole design on the silicon is called the design flow. Now they encompasses many steps, first is the problem spe specification, this is actually the problem or we can tell the, the specification of the digital system which is to be implemented, the digital system. Then we have to synthesis it, so given the problem how we can get the uh, logic, logic synthesis part that means the gate using the gate or there can be different uh, equipments, the simulation then whether it is behaving correctly or not, whether the system is behaving correctly or not. So that is for the simulation, then the layout, so actually on the silicon how it can, how we can get the implementation, then the testability analysis that when, whether it is uh, running accurately or working correctly, 
that for that purposes that we have to do the testing and many other things to be done. So, mainly these are the procedures and this step by step procedure is called, called the design flow. Now, some new CAT tools are available for this design flow. Actually, not only one CAT tool is sufficient for this whole uh, uh, design procedure. The steps even for each step a different CAT tool is needed. Now, first thing is that given a system to be implemented a digital system or digital design, first I have to uh, specify or I, I a system means this is a hardware. So, when I and CAT tool uh, is a software. So, I want the interface between this hardware and software and for these purposes one hardware description language called the HDL has evolved. So, HDLs provide formats for representing the outputs of various design steps. An HDL based CAT tool transforms from its HDL input into a HDL output which contains more hardware information. Why more hardware information? Because my uh, problem specification or the specification of the digital system is given. From there we are uh, creating or we are developing a program or the using hardware description language which is software. But my ultimate aim is to get a hardware on silicon. Now, using this design flow or these steps by a step by step procedure as we go from um, uh, the or uh, as we are running the steps then more and more we are going nearer to the hardware. So, this hardware information is in the form of behavioral level to register transfer level, register transfer level to gate level and gate level to transistor level. Ultimately, the on the silicon the transistors are fabricated. Now, the two competing HDLs are in market now, though uh, earlier even 10 years before the, um, the different organization according to their requirement they developed their own languages. But now as uh, the thing has been standardized, so only the two standard HDLs people are using. One is called the Verilog, another is the VHDL. Now, uh, the we give a uh, very simple view of design flow. See, this is a uh, this is design idea means the given the system to be implemented that the designer must have the idea that or uh, some abstract level design idea that how it can be implemented in hardware. So, that we are calling the design idea. Then this uh, whole design its behavior the behavioral design is represented. This can be a how this can be represented? So, this can be a flow graph or this can be a pseudo code. Now, from this behavioral design the data path design has been evaluated. So, data, the output of data path design is actually the whole design realized by the bus transistor, bus and the transistor register. So, already we have read that how the register to register transfer. So, the whole design as if the 
uh, using the load stored type of structure the register to register transfer using the bus the, the data path is designed. Then the logic design, so logic now the design is synthesized using the gate flip flop the different type of logical um, gates and normally they are, it is called the net list because this is the network of different uh, gates flip flops etc. Now after this logic design we call this is a physical design. So physical design mean once the logic correct logic we have synthesized then now my next step is how we can get this uh, implemented on a silicon. This we are calling the physical design. Actually there are several steps later we will see in details the what are the different steps of the physical design. Then it is manufactured and ultimately we give the get the chip or board. Here chip is the, the actually the integrated circuit chip. Now first thing we see the design idea how that can be represented we call the design representation. So design can be represented at various levels from three different angles. It can be behavioral, it can be structural, it can be physical. Now these three can be represented by the very popular Y diagram. See this is a Y diagram and the three arms that we are calling that one is called as if one is structural, another is behavioral and one is physical. So actually we want the physical representation. See structural is as if the, the whole design I have user have enough idea of the design and then the design how they can be represented or realized by using processor, memory, obviously the interconnection is the bus. So this is nothing but some network of, uh, of the memory, processor, all these things. So these are called the structural. Behavioral means how the design behaves, that means how the, the representation of its behavior by flowchart, what if this input is given, what will be the output and how this output can be generated. So this is the step by step procedure is called algorithm or flowchart. Now ultimately we want the physical thing and this is the PCBs or MCMs, this is called the physical thing. Now the same thing we can uh, represent that structural can be resistors, multiplexers, ALUs because the design structure or the hardware design that can be synthesized using resistor multiplexers, ALUs. Behavioral that can be resistor transfers because it is the algorithm or the flowchart. So that we also we can rep represent by using resistor transfers and we get the physical as ASICs say or FPGAs that means either by some CMOS technology or the gate array technology the field programmable gate arrays. So structures even the structures can be gates or flip flops ultimately it should be gate and then that gate can be realized by transistors. And behavioral can be Boolean by Boolean equations because the set of Boolean equations can also represent the behavior of the digital system that already we have read. So now it can be mapped to the cells ultimately when it is physically designed. Now the structural thing can be realized by transistors. Again the behavioral things can be the transistor functions and this can be transistor layout. So ultimately we want the 
implementation of transistors on silicon and that is my physical thing. Now, see now how this behavioral representation can be uh, done. So, behavioral representation it specifies how a particular design should respond to a given set of inputs, it is behavior of a system. So, this may be specified by Boolean equations. Already we have seen, we have seen that uh, given Boolean equations, how Carnot map can be, um, uh, Carnot map synthesize the actual and or uh, um, design and different type of other techniques we have seen that from Boolean equations to realize the actual hardware circuit. Then tables of input and output values. This can be simply represented by a table. If these are the inputs, this can be the output, just like the truth table of the circuits. Algorithms written in standard high level language like C or some pseudocode. Algorithms written in special hardware description language like Verilog or VHDL. So, in these different ways, I can represent my behavior of the system. Now, behavioral representation, we give one small example, we take one n bit adder is constructed by cascading one bit adders. Now, a one bit adder has two operand inputs a and b, a carry input c, a carry output c y, a sum output s, these are the two outputs s and c y and three inputs a b c. Now, already we know that some expression is a b dash c dash a dash b dash c plus a dash b c dash plus a b c and carry output is a b plus a c plus b c. So, these are the two Boolean equations can represent the behavior of adder, one bit adder. Now, if it is a algorithmic level description, then we can write in this way, say I am writing a carry module, say module carry, there are three inputs a b c and one output, one output carry. So, input a b c, output carry c y. Now, assign c y is a and b, a b plus b c plus c a. So, a and b, b and c, c and a and there are or. So, this is a n module. So, this is an pseudo code or algorithmic level description. Now, if it is a table form, we can give the just simple uh, input output in a table. So, primitive carry again carry y is the c y is the carry output a b c are the three inputs and that are declared. Now, this can be in table form a b c c 0. So, the truth table that means all possible values of a b c are given here question mark means that can be question mark means that can be 0 that can be 0 or 1 anything. So, if it is 1 1 0 or 1 1 1 the carry output is 1, if it is 1 1 1 or 1 0 1 carry output is 1. So, actually for all possible values of the inputs a b c what will be the carry output that is given in the table. So, it is in the the behavioral specification in table form and that is represented in a algorithmic way. Now, is a structural representation. Now, if the designer have enough idea about the design, he, he has the idea of the structures, then it specifies how components are interconnected, not uh, actually the behavioral level or algorithmic level are again some in abstract level. Structures mean we can tell this is the second level of design and if the designer ha is expert, so he has that idea and he can even represent the design in a structural representation. 
So, in general the description is a list of modules and their interconnects and this in called the net list. So, this can be specified at various levels. We take one example. So, we take one simple circuit uh, this is a 4 NAND gate. I give some uh, line number. So, this is a input 1 and that line is represented as a 1. Similarly, input 2, input 2 is 2, this intermediate line is 3, some numbering I am giving, this is 4, this is 5 and the output line is 6. So, the net list will be the how they are interconnected, that information should be there. So, all are two input NAND gate and that can be represented as a NAND 2. So, NAND 2 means it is a two input NAND gate, two input NAND gate. Now, NAND 2, 1, 2, 3 means the 1, 2 are the inputs and these are the, this is the output line. So, actually this represents, this is the NAND gate A. So, this is the NAND gate A. Now, 1, 3, 4. So, 1, 3, 4 means this is the 1, 3 and 4 that means this is my NAND gate B. 2, 3, 5 means this one, these are the two input 2 and 3 lines and 5 is the output. So, this is C and 4, 5, 6. So, this is my D. So, this, this is the net list of these small circuits. Now, at the structural level, the levels of abstraction are module level, gate level, switch level or circuit level. If it is a very large circuit, obviously we cannot represent this thing by a NAND gate or AND gate. So, this can be in module level. Now, this module is a set of that can be a set of gates or even set of sub modules and these sub modules are actually realized by set of gates. So, that is why the, they are the, there are different levels, levels of abstraction. Or just now we have shown the example that is a gate level representation or it can be switch level, it can be circuit level and switch can be realized by transistors or AND gate. Now, in each level more detail is revealed about the implementation. Now, the physical representation. So, the lowest level of physical specification is photo mask information required by the various processing steps in a fabrication process. So, this is out of scope of this uh, class. So, just we uh, mention that again the physical representation can be done. Now, we see the, the actual digital IC design flow. That means, when the circuits become very large, then how they can be automated using the CAT tools. What are the different steps to be followed? So, first is the design entry or just now the thing we have discussed that how the behavior of the uh, design or the design spec specification can be represented. Then the second one is the logic synthesis. Now, from there how we can get the, the net list or the, um, the circuit realized by some gates. These are called the logic synthesis. So, one called CAT tool is needed for this logic synthesis. Then, this is a pre layout simulation. So, mainly, or here actually, some more steps we can apply uh, add, say the verification. That means, whether after this logic syn syn synthesis, the logic we have got whether it is actually 
giving the correct result or not. This is called the simulation means applying some inputs whether I am getting the correct output or not that I want to simulate. Here in different way we can verify also this is called the verification that also we can do the design verification also. Now normally these are called the logical design or front end CAD. So some CAD tools are already available they are developed to get the netlist or to get the logic synthesis from the specification of the digital system. Now once we have got the logic synthesis or the netlist is available then we go to the physical design part or normally it is called the back end CAD. Again for this the CAD tools are available for this physical design. Normally the physical design means the steps involved to get the logic or the circuitry on a silicon. So after this actually my ultimate product is a piece of silicon on which the circuit is fabricated. For this we need the flow planning, placement, routing mainly these three steps to be followed and for each step this is we need a post layout simulation. So here from here again after routing we do the circuit extraction we do the simulation whether the circuit, circuit is correctly working or not. Now from uh, this design entry to get the silicon as we, we are coming down actually we are, we are uh, um, coming to more close closer and closer to the hardware. Here it was a the design entry is in abstract level then we can use some algorithm or the hardware description language then we are getting the logic synthesis which is realized by the some get or, or hardware equipments at the uh, represented with the definition of the hardware. Then it is floor planning how actually on the piece of silicon here floor is the, the silicon area. So how they can be uh, what are the um, space for them then how they can be placed then how they can be routed means actually interconnection. So we are getting more and more to more close to the hardware. Now we the first step just after the design entry already we have uh, discussed the design entry part the behavioral the structural or the physical representation using the um, boolean equations or the hardware description language or some table lookup table lookup in table format we can give. Now the second step is the logic synthesis. So first we give the definition of synthesis what do we mean by synthesis. So synthesis is the process to convert a circuit description written in HDL to gate level description. Here we have assumed that the design entry is given in HDL or the system specification is in a hardware description language like Verilog or PageDL. So system specs is given in HDL. So from HDL to get level description is called the logic synthesis. We take one small example. So this is a module, my module input I1, output out1, some register where and some HDL logics are given. Now given this problem specific this is a small the specification of a small system then they can be converted into some NAND gate, some P flip flop. So these are my hardware equipments or the system is now defined with the hardware equipments like, like logic gates, flip flop and there this is a synthesis, this is a logic synthesis from a HDL portion. So logic synthesis the input can be Boolean equations 
and FSMs, output a netlist of gates and flip flops. Now, combination circuits and sequential circuits are typically handled separately and this class already we have seen that from the Boolean equations how the, the, the circuit can be synthesized or the combinational circuits or different sequential circuits how they can be synthesized that part already we have read. So, here now for large circuit the, the cat tools are developed to implement those techniques to automate the procedure which will be very easier to synthesize the large circuits that is the current state of the art. Now, what are the design goals? Design goals are minimize number of levels the delay, minimize number of gates again area, minimize signal activity that is power. So, that is why always we say to reduce the delay area and power these are the three parameters to be handled for a efficient design. So, these are my design goals to minimize delay area and power. Now, the typical constraints are the target library say only NAND and non gate. That means, how the uh, um, circuit is or the logic is synthesized by using what type of gates. So, what gates are available that is called the library and if it is only NAND and not obviously that is my constraint. So, if all the gates are available it may happen that we get a very good uh, um, design structure some, some optimized one which reduces all the three. Now, another step is actually involved uh, um, within the synthesis part that is called the logic translation and optimization. Because once the logic has been synthesized, it may happen that it is not optimized. So, again we take one example. So, consider the following equation that C is A x or B. So, this is a, so this is a a x or A x or B, then C 1 is negation of A and B plus C. Say this is A B A B and A and B and this is a plus. So, this is the thing. Now, D is C x or C 1. So, this is my C, C and this is my C 1. This is my C 1, this is my C. So, this gives my D. This output is D and the final output is negation of B, D complement. So, this is the uh, is, is, um, uh, equations of this, the Boolean equations for this circuit. Now, after optimization, the circuit uh, becomes is nothing but a two input and gate that say it is a a b and out output is the this type of thing that this is a uh, um, a and b. So, this is a optimization because the here so many circuitry is needed and here only one two input and gate is sufficient. So, this optimization is one part of the synthesis. Now, the third step is logic simulation. So, this takes a logic level netlist as input and simulate functional behavior. Now, netlist obtained from schematic capture means the actual circuitry or synthesis. For simulation the behavior of components is used. Now, these are available from component library, gates, flip flops, marks, registers, adders, 
these are my equipments which are necessary for my logic synthesis and we need we know the how or the truth table of these gates the input output of the flip flops that is the characteristics of all these equipments and then the logic can be simulated. Now, ability to handle large circuits of millions of gates should be very first or the hardware accelerators, because all these CAT tools are what today we are discussing the state of the art design procedures, mainly that is for a millions of um, gates together or millions of gates fabricated on a small piece of silicon. So, mainly it should be very fast and the it should generate the hardware very fast. So, simulation objectives are functional correctness of the netlist, this requires application of a test vector. So, we apply our test vector to some test bench we have to generate. Then timing analysis, the estimation of delay critical paths, whether hazards are the avoided, recess conditions are in, um, overcome and the test generation, this is required for manufacture test. So, these are the simulation objectives. Then another is logic verification. So, it verifies the synthesized net list matches the original specification, detect the design errors, also synthesis errors. Basic objective is to ensure functional correctness and to locate errors if any. So, broadly two approaches are there for simulation is one because simulation also we are giving some inputs and what are the outputs we are checking. So, these are fast incremental and can handle large circuits this simulation or another can be formal verification it is slow exhaustive for and that is mainly for small circuits only, but nowadays people are doing for large circuits also. So, these are for uh, my uh, the design procedure. Now, quickly we go that what are the design methodology? We see that what are the different type of design methodology, what is the current state of the art. Now, for VLSI that means, if very large scale integrated circuit where the millions of or millions of millions of gates are fabricated on a small piece of silicon, we call that is a very large scale integrated circuits. So, mainly this the, the design digital design flow that just now I mentioned they are followed for this VLSI designs. Now, what are the technologies or what are the design methodologies? Normally, there are three that programmable logic devices, standard cell based design and full custom design. Now, these are programmable logic devices already we have read the how these PLDs means the PAL, PLA they can be designed, they can be um, uh, what is the actual circuitry of the PAL or the PLA. Now, using these programmable logic devices this can be the systems or this VLSI circuits can be implemented. Now, the logics are normally of two types standard logic and ASIC and this ASICs that application specific integrated circuit they are programmable logic types, gate arrays, cell based IC and full based full custom IC. Now, this programmable logic devices are of PAL already we have read the CPLD is complex programmable logic device or field programmable gate array that also we have read that actual design structure. And now using those the large circuits or VLSI circuits are implemented. FPGA already uh, the structure we have seen, so this is field programmable gate arrays, array of logic cells connected via routing channels. There are special IO cells and logic cells and mainly lookup tables with associated registers and interconnection on SRAM basis or antifuse elements. We have also read this FPGA. This is one Xilinx FPGA routing. So, this is mainly the, um, the CLDs are there, the complex logic block and mainly some switch boxes are there 
which are connecting this logic box. So, this is the overall idea of the FPGA. How this can be programmable? Mainly they are programmable using this switch box. So, general purpose interconnect uses switch matrix. Now, the second one is semi custom design that one of the most prevalent custom design style. The basic idea is all of the commonly used logic cells are developed, characterized and stored in a standard cell library. Nowadays for digital design the moderately um, complex or very complex digital systems this is the state of the art that the logic cells they are developed, characterized and stored in a standard cell library. And main concept is reuse. Now for a, a new system to be designed, these already trusted, already characterized logic cells kept in the library that can be used. So, typical library may contain a few hundred cells including inverters, NAND gates, NOR gates, complex AOI, AOI means AND OR, say two input AND and then it is OR, this is a AOI or OAI or AND inverter, D latch, D flip and flip flops. So, there are several other things or this can be a larger modules that can be used as a cell. So, they are typically kept on a uh, library and they can be reused for a new design. So, that is called the semi custom design or many time it is called a cell based design. This is a cell based. Now, floor plan for standard cell design. So, inside the I O frame which is reserved for I O cells, the chip area contains rows or columns of standard cells. Now, between cell rows are channels for dedicated intercell routing and the physical design and layout of logic cells ensure that when placed into rows, their heights match. Neighboring cells can be abutted side by side which provides natural connections for power and ground lines in each row. So, if we see the um, one uh, pictorially this thing that here actually this is the uh, this is the rows where this is the rows this is the rows where the standard soils can be placed. So, this height should match and this this is another row where the again the cells can be placed from taken from the library. Now, between two cells or between two rows this space available this is called the routing channel. This is called the routing channel that means this is the area available for interconnecting the cells and this is called the routing the interconnection. So, this is the called the standard cell row standard cell row and these are the routing channels. Now, over the cell routing is also possible, there are different design styles and these are the mainly for IO cells, these are these are IO cells. This is overall very simple uh, some structure of the semi custom design, mainly that uh, from library taken from the li library the equipments are placed on the uh, cell row standard cell row and then they are they are routed by using this uh, this uh, area available between two rows and that is called the routing area or routing channel. Now, the placement actually now actually the the physical design question that after chip logic design is done using standard cells in the library the most challenging task is to place individual cells into rows where the rows should be placed so that the interconnection length will be minimum that means the routing cost should be minimum 
and parallelly the delay the, the area, the area should be minimum. So, the interconnect them in a way that meets significant design goals in circuit speed, speed, chip area, speed, chip area and power consumption. Mainly these are my three uh, objectives to be met. Many advanced CAD tools for press and route have been developed and used to achieve the above goals. So, many algorithms are available for this placement and the routing and these CAD tools are nothing but the implementation of these algorithms to get a efficient design which optimizes speed, chip area and power consumption. So, placement is the technique that how and where to place the standard cells within one standard cell row, so that it can be um, routed that means interconnected with other cells according to the net list, so that my uh, objectives can be met means the my delay should be less, area should be minimum and power consumption should be low. Now, is the full custom design. So, the standard cell based uh, design is often called the semi custom design. The cells are pre designed for general use and the same cells are utilized in many different shape. In the full custom design, the entire mask design is done anew without use of any library. So, this is very important that actually from scratch we have to design, there is no cell library available. Now, the development of cost of such a design style is prohibitively high. The concept of design reuse is very popular in order to reduce the design cycle time and cost. So, for digital this thing is very important that reuse and that is why the semi custom design is being used for digital design, but for full custom design normally the for analog circuits are being designed. So, in real uh, life full custom layout in which the geometry orientation and placement of every transistor is done individually by the designer. So, design productivity is usually very low, typically 10 to 20 transistors per day per designer. So, cost is high, here the cost design cost is very high, design cost is high. In digital CMOS DLSI, the full custom design is rarely used due to high labor cost. Mainly here the cell based design or semi custom design is being used, where the we can reuse the cell library. Now, exceptions to this include the design of high volume products such as memory chips, high performance microprocessors and FPGA masters. Now, um, comparison among the uh, various design styles. So, so far um, we have seen the different type of uh, design methodology, the field programmable gate array, the simple gate array based, standard cell based design means our semi custom design and the full custom design. Now, <coughs> uh, cell size is fixed for FPGA, the field programmable gate array. For gate array also simple gate array also it is fixed. For standard cell based design as already we have seen this is a fixed height, means here as already we have seen the Uh, it is a see here this is the uh, this is the semi custom design or the standard cell based design. So, actually there are rows and these cells the cells taken from the 
or, or standard cells like standard cells like NAND gate, say NAND gate or not or deep flip flop or even some larger modules say AOI type modules. So, first they can be taken from the library and they are placed into the row, they are placed into these rows. Now, here when the one NAND gate is taken and placed on the row and in the same row if a flip flop is placed, say this is a flip flop and say this is a this is a AND gate. Now, the height of this cell that should match otherwise they cannot be placed in the same row. Similarly, here the another NAND gate or say some AOI is placed and their, their height should match. So, here, here this, this is fixed height means the height of the uh, standard cell row, cell row where the cells taken from the library are placed they can they should match. Now, full custom design these are totally variable because we are not using any standard cells or the already uh, characterized cell. So, these are the totally variable. Now, the cell type, cell type is programmable for feed programmable gate array these cells are programmable as already we have seen. that this is the programmable by using some switch box and get array is fixed. Again for standard cell these cell types are variable because they can be different type of cells are that are available in the standard cell library. The full custom this is also variable because these, these are totally different and scratch it is being designed. Then the cell placement. For FPGA, this is a fixed type of array as already we have seen that this is a two dimensional structures and the complex logic blocks are placed on the cells and at the junctions the switch box are there. So, this cell placement is fixed for the gate array obviously it is fixed, but standard cell it is fixed in row, the standard cell rows are available the standard cells are being placed on the row and the routing is being done by the space available between two rows. For full custom this is totally variable. So, full custom design is very flexible actually according to the designers own choice this can be implemented. Now, the interconnection. So, FPGA is programmable again interconnection is also programmable by using the switch box. For get array these are variable, for standard cell also this in interconnection are also variable and for full custom these are also variable. Now, design time for FPGA this is a very fast. So, that is why the current state of the art is the FPGA particularly for academic purposes this can be these are being used. Another thing is for FPGA these are very cheap because already we have that uh, fixed grid size available where the complex logic blocks and the switch everything is there. Only what we are doing that according to our own design the, the logic blocks are chosen and the we are doing the programmable I O also to get the actual design. So, design time is actually few weeks here. Now, for gate array this is very fast, for standard cell this is medium because here though the cells are available, the standard cells, the different type of gates, the flip flops that are available, but actually the interconnections are being done depending on the 
current design. So, sometimes not all the cells are available and particularly if memory is there in a design, then this can be a large design and then the simulation time or writing the um, HDL code that part is also uh, that time is uh, moderately large. So, for standard cell this is a medium time year saving, but for full custom this is very slow. So, actually design time is very high because as already I mentioned only per day we can design only 10 to 20 transistors and then the interconnection, the simulation and the testing of the circuit also uh, consumes a lot of time. So, this full custom di um, design is very slow, but we cannot avoid this full custom design because for some of the circuits particularly for new approach and particularly the analog circuits always be necessary the full custom. For, but for digital design because we are mainly discussing the digital system design. So, this is the, the current state of the art is the uh, standard cell based design and this is using the, um, the cells already available in the library and the design time is very high. So, mainly the cat tool based design is the current state of the art. The whatever we discussed in this class the implementation etcetera, now the cat tools are nothing but the software which implemented those designs and now the large circuits are being implemented or realized by this technique. So, this is the end of the uh, course the digital system design, thank you. Indeed, in this golden jubilee year, as the celebration continues, Pandit Nehru would surely have been a proud man today. Thank you.